They were met on a field in Massachusetts called Lexington Green. 243 years ago, on April the 19th of 1775, a shot was fired that was heard all around the world. It was the first responders of the first great action of the United States of America to say that we will not succumb to tyranny. That said to the British who were coming to march to Concord to destroy a weapons factory. We understand one simple thing in the United States of America. An armed person is a citizen. An unarmed person is a subject. And how funny it is that today when you go to Massachusetts, you see some of the most restrictive gun laws in the United States of America. A place where the first shot was fired so that we can sit here tonight and enjoy liberty, freedom, and democracy. And if you're one of those natural born Texans. I'm not, but I went to the University of Tennessee. And one of the things you understand going to the University of Tennessee, you understand why they call us the volunteers. Because we came here to this great state to stand and lock arms with the Texans, to stand and lock arms and make sure that when Colonel William Barrett Travis drew that line in the sand, we stepped on the right side of that line. When Colonel William Barrett Travis wrote that incredible letter that said, victory or death, we understood that liberty means sometimes you have to sacrifice your life, but in the end you will have victory. And so it's this Saturday, this Saturday, April the 21st of 1836, 182 years ago, that Sam Houston, a Tennessean, led an army to defeat General Santa Ana at San Jacinto. So I challenge you. I challenge you if you want to understand what the young man talked about, the legacy of men and women who have served and sacrificed and committed to these great United States of America, that have served and sacrificed and committed so that we can be here in the great Lone Star State of Texas, that you must tell these stories. Tomorrow when you go out, I want you to go up and ask people, do you know what April the 19th is? And you need to explain to them. This Saturday, I want you to go out and find every single car that has a tag and a license plate that still says California <laughs> or Illinois. And you say to them, do you know why you are here? Do you understand what happened on this day 182 years ago? Because the problem is that we don't tell people what it means for the sacrifices that happened here 182 years ago. Then when folks are out here talking this nonsense about turning Texas blue, why would you want to turn Texas into anything except for the great state that gave us men and women who would lay down their lives so that we could be here today? See that? This is something we must take as a personal responsibility. Because just the same as those men stood there for those 13 incredible days of the Alamo, when they knew that they were surrounded, when they knew that it was either victory or death, they did not decide to take the dishonorable path of surrender. They stood. And so here we are all of these years later, and we still have men and women that are willing to leave their homes, willing to leave their families, willing to go and sacrifice their bodies and maybe come back without their lives, come back without a limb, but they do it because they love you. Because when that line in the sand is drawn, they stood on the right side of that line. Not a red line, but a real line. The thing you must come to understand is before there was a United States of America, there was an army. Before there was this nation, there was a navy. Before there was this constitutional republic, there was a Marine Corps. Who run, bro? See, what? what army guys? <laughs> you know, these sons of bitches from the Marines, they always. <laughs> but the thing is this the motto of the United States Army says, This will defend. Because before there was an America, there were principles, there were values, there were ideals that we had to defend. And today, 
The biggest threat to the United States of America is when we have a deserter who someone stands up and says that this person served with honor and distinction. When you have a deserter where other men and women, honorable men, lost their lives, and that deserter is walking free. When you have a nation that celebrates a person that gave away over 700,000 pieces of classified information, but because obviously this young soldier heard the song by Shania Twain, Twain that I feel like a woman, <laughs> <laughs> he was released from Fort Leavenworth Prison and now believes that he, she, I don't know, whatever, wants to run for Senate in the state of Maryland. There is nothing more honorable than the men and women who run to the sound of the guns. That's what happened 243 years ago in Lexington Green and in Concord Bridge. And if we fail to raise the next generation of those types of men and women, because we have forgotten what honor is, because we have forgotten what integrity is, because we have forgotten what character truly is, because the greatest amongst us in the United States of America are not the people up on Capitol Hill. Trust me, I know because I was up there. <laughs> the greatest are not down in Austin. The greatest are not down in the Dallas City Council or in the Plano City Council or the County Commission. The greatest amongst us in this great nation of the reason why you're here tonight. And I will not rest. I know Stewart says that this is one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen. I will not rest until the boot and shoot or the boot and salute fills up AT&T Stadium. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 